Geospatial intelligence is a tool for the proponents of global governance to cast a neural net over humanity. This program provides a solution to the conundrum they faced getting the global population to accept microchipping or RFID. This technology even surpasses RFID in that microchips can be removed or disabled. How do you remove all of the components, elements, behaviors, relationships, emotions, and tools we use in everyday life, which define from a system analytical standpoint anyway, who you are. I'd like to thank the following subscribers for providing information relative to this report. Douglas Hotchkiss, Shuri 868, L. Chavez, Silent Grace, Mr. Katai, JA9 News, Freedom Fighter 2127, Amy Tudor, Run to Christ HD, plus others who provided more dots to connect who wish to remain anonymous. What is the neural net about to be cast over humanity? It's been dubbed GEOINT, a geospatial intelligence network. It's being supported and distributed through multinational intelligence collaboration as well as interagency intelligence collaboration by the proponents of global governance. I'm going to go over some of the high points of this two-hour video symposium that was made in 2010 regarding GON and its title, Mastering the Human Domain. Geospatial intelligence intends to master the human domain through concepts of human terrains, human dynamics, and human geography. Threat centers, as this video explains, are integral parts of the system. Participants they'll be mapping will be working with the government, i.e. over the people. Exploiting the human geography of a region or national centri nation centric populations. The use of open source data equals social media such as cell phones, Facebook, LinkedIn, and other social networking platforms. One of the presenters goes on to say if that you're not collecting all data, you're not going to get a good, a good human terrain. The system decodes coded information to find the signal in the noise, which leaves us with absolutely no aspect of privacy. It's tracking all aspects of all human nodes on the network. Yes, human beings will become nodes on this uh, geographic information grid and network-centric system. It discusses the emerging field of human geographers and cartographers, developing a tapestry that incorporates all aspects of human behavior, emotions, and reactions. A common theme that you'll hear throughout this symposium presentation is that there are too many people involved in government and military decision making raising the question, who is in charge? An AI-based network-centric ge geospatial intelligence system will be in charge. Vladimir Putin was the chair of geospatial intelligence in Russia. And R Russia will also be using this technology as a geopolitical force. In fact, GEOINT is already being used so in several systems countries right are now. being used to kill people in these countries. And the speaker in this segment goes on to say, is, it is the price you pay for advancement of this technology. And we're willing to make those sacrifices. The system is able to depict crisis resolution and pre-crisis action. 
in the segment being presented by Doug Weinstein at the office of the Under Secretary of Defense Intelligence states that there is a growing need for greater data collection to more define the human dimension. There's a greater need for more cooperation for data sharing, i.e. open source, free-flowing data, and communications. Again, there is difficulty in identifying who exactly is in charge. Centralizing command and control of humanity is what this system is intended to do. Geospatial intelligence moves the military aspect of the J2 capabilities to the private and public sectors of global society for the purpose of mastering the human domain. Not from just a military standpoint, but from the standpoint of command and control of humanity, whereby every human will become a node on the global information grid from a network-centric standpoint, or from a material standpoint, human a human inventory item from a centralized human management system. The symposium goes system. on to identify the increasing need to focus the cognitive behavior and contextual meanings in communications for the system to be able to more accurately predict outcomes and develop appropriate responses as well as the collection of biometric data on everyone goes on to explain how, will they, how they will be using humans as sensors on the network in addition to remote sensing devices. Going beyond military applications, socioeconomic, religious, and cultural infrastructure, the system has the ability to develop, identify, and identify directives regarding political will, governance by a machine on a global information grid casting a neural net on humanity. Predictive software is at the core of geospatial intelligence. Harvesting all commercial data is another aspect that was discussed at length in this symposium. This would include your banking and purchasing um, practices, not to mention theft of emerging technologies and innovations that could be used to the betterment of the human condition. This could very well be very, a very important tool or weapon for the TPP. The Geospatial Intelligence Group was formed as a nonprofit back in 2004 with one of its offshoots or child organizations being the YPG, which is one of OGS Systems um, brainchilds. What is the YPG? So how does OG Systems sum up the YPG? The government is in the beginning of a massive shift of how they do business. OGS, of which the YP, uh, YPG is the brainchild of, continues to grow. One of our main goals is to share our vision so that government, our, our customers, can have the best possible solutions to their problems. Well, their customers turn out to be the DOD and the Global Intelligence Network, and their problems appear to be us. It goes on to say, OG Systems is taking the initiative to be active with young professionals within the DOD intelligence community. A uh, video describing the YPG can be found at the following link, and it's here in the article. You might want to check it out. And it goes on to say how that video explores how sharing its vision with like-minded professionals in the community who will one day be calling the shots. Not only does a strong YPG presence engage our community with our vision for a better future. Now this section of their site here all videos in Data Analytics 2014 
presents two to four minute snippets of some of the 90 or more companies involved in developing the next generation tech for geospatial analytics to master the human domain. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'll leave a link for this in the description section of this video, but I'm gonna go over a couple of these key corporations and what their core focuses are on with regard to this overall system or neural net that they're looking at casting over humanity. And first we have the Litos Corporation. Uh, their main thrust is in data analytics, uh, logarithmic analytics for dirty data or dumps for, for geospatial data collection. Now what's dirty data? Dirty data is what can be classified as the vast amounts of data being collected by the NSA uh, in the Bluffdale, Utah data center as well as several of the underground data centers that they have that are also repositories for the just massive amount of data being collected on everybody. One of the <clears throat> pieces of technology they are using to collect these vast sums of data are called dirt boxes. And what these dirt boxes do is they collect tens of thousands of cell phone information on a single sweep. Next we have IBM, one of the usual subjects. They are focusing on Apple, Apple technology, uh, tying in usage for the determination of trends and personal diagnostics, personal <clears throat> structural awareness and analytics, and cognitive analytics. They're working on the software that answers questions about users that have never been asked. ICG Corporation, who developed Lux. Lux is a real-time um, piece of software that is capable of digesting vast amounts of data and run analytics on the fly. And this is going to be a important component of a lot of the modules and technology companies working on geospatial intelligence global systems. Um, what Lux can do, in a nutshell, is change the natural outcomes of naturally occurring events. It's used by DOD Intelligence Now in data analysis. The Digital Reasoning Foundation. It is finding entities or nodes, which I explained before, are going to become, each and every human being is going to become a node on this network, and identifying relationships or what they classify as edges. It's that thin interconnecting line between you and somebody else and somebody else and somebody else. It's it has already developed cognitive machine learning technology. It interprets intent by finding a signal amongst the noise. BAE systems, another usual subject. <clears throat> They're developing technology to handle huge data dumps and developing algorithms to do this using ABI, or Activity-Based Intelligence. And ABI, or Activity-Based Intelligence, is a larger dimension of the human domain. And they're going to be collecting this ABI through the use of social media. Cognitio Corporation. Uh, this company also makes on-the-fly analyses of vast sums of data and drive that information to the government. Debate, um, they're developing a data philosopher module, 
which is cognizant, which has, I'm sorry, which has cognizant software capability. Again, we have software that thinks or thinks it thinks. And for those of you who think that the uh, NSA big data collection is going away with some set provision of the Patriot Act, the NSA is just giving way to geospatial intelligence. It's not going away, it's being taken over by a system, a computer system. Previously, I mentioned how ABI, or activity-based intelligence, is the larger dimension of the human domain. And here we're going to just take a look at this paper put out by USGIF, which explains this a little better than I did. Activity-based intelligence is divine, defined as a discipline of intelligence where the analyst and subsequent collection is focused on the activity and transactions associated with an entity or a node or a person on a network, a population or an area of interest. The human domain or human dimension which is a vital and integral part of ABI is defined as the presence activities, including transactions, both physical and virtual, culture, social, uh, structure, organization, networks and relationships, motivation, intent, vulnerabilities and capabilities of humans as single individuals or groups across all domains of the operation environment, air, sea, land, space, cyberspace, right there. <clears throat> the ABI multi-intelligence or multi-int approach to analysis has grown in popularity and number. Born from numerous and significant changes, these include changes in warfare, changes in the makeup of the challenges facing the U.S. and U.S. interests, the increasing flood of sensors, and the resulting data growth. <clears throat> the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, or the NGA, is at the forefront of the ABI push within the intelligence community. The ubiquitous nature of geospatial intelligence, or geoint, which we are talking about here, coupled with human domain analytics, or the HTA, forms a true, the true foundation of an ABI. <clears throat> In the past, an analyst worked to solve a puzzle. Today, analysts work on mysteries and don't even know there is a puzzle to be solved. Criminals are often uh, indistinguishable from the normal populace. Law enforcement must assess the activities of this section of the populace, factor in the nature of the surrounding human domain, and then discern abnormal or criminal activity. Well, that sounds like pre-crime. Uh, there is a new trend in law enforcement called intelligent-led policing, too. Go back and, if you get a chance, read the report I did on Obama's 21st century policing executive order, I believe it was 13684 which brings and goes on to say which brings to bear resources from the intelligence community in further addressing the activities and transactions of the populace you and me one of the challenges facing abi is that if additional information can crystallize the picture and if the analyst or the software can extract the significance or the signal from all that noise. This was the pressure cooker that necessitated a new multidisciplinary approach to intelligence and its resulting new analytical workflows, new thought processes, new tradecraft, and specialized training. And here's just some of the principles um, of ABI which was originally conceived to assist in finding criminals or terrorists 
or patriots or militia members or well you get the picture the principles of ABI allow it to also be used in a very real sense with those mysteries that involve no bad guys. The purpose of ABI has been <clears throat> expressed in numerous forms and can be summarized in the following five elements. Collect, characterize, and locate activities and transactions. Identify and locate actors and entities conducting the activities and transactions or provocateurs. Identify and locate networks of actors, provocateurs. Understand the relationships between networks and develop a pattern of life. <clears throat> there is no mention of adversaries, criminal or otherwise, um, in the ABI principles. The Analyst is not cued or focused on a specific target, but rather is informed by the data or by the system as it is being presented. The intention of ABI is to develop the patterns of life, to determine which activities and transactions are abnormal, and to seek to understand those patterns to develop courses of action. That would be threat response. It is focused on understanding relationships between various entities or nodes and their activities and transactions. These activities and transactions are not necessarily just tied to geospatial actions, but also apply across the cyber, social, financial, and commercial domains, to name a few. And this you should, you should find interesting. ABI is valuable in understanding the environment even if there are no anticipated direct hostile actions. Pre um, preparation of the environment, support to stability operations and civil affairs operations all benefit from characterizing and understanding the patterns of life in an area of interest and exploiting that knowledge. First, it goes on to say, ABI is the concept of geo-reference to discover. All collected data should be indexed to a spot on the earth, which is known as geo-referencing. It goes on to say that in ABI, the analyst, or the software, uses multi-intelligence data at its most discoverable level to begin analyses. The integration and fusion occurs long before the finished product is formed. Well, that sounds a lot to me like three different people looking at an elephant from three inches away are going to get three different interpretations of what they're seeing. None of them correct, but all of them equally valid. And that's basically explained right here. The third principle of ABI is data neutrality. Data neutrality simply means that all data and data sources are potentially equally, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> viable for ABI analytics. And then the third principle of ABI is called sequence neutrality. Another way of explaining sequence neutrality is that the data often holds the answer to a question that has not yet been asked. Here, under focus on the human domain analytics and ABI, it states that it is evident that understanding the human domain is the underpinning of the ABI analytics. ABI is focused on understanding entities that don't have signatures in any single sensor of phenomenology, understanding these entities at the human level is essential. <clears throat> There's been a shift from concentration on nation states to smaller organizations to individuals. Uh, this system or technology will also be used for support 
of COINTEL operations, which also re requires a clear and su sustained focus on population-centric activities such as governance, development, and local population, sometimes before the start of hostilities. So that sounds a lot to me like putting the clamp down on the people before anything even happens. Human domain analytical model. The human domain, which I think we all understand this by now, is the global understanding of anything associated with people. <clears throat> The human domain and its resulting analytics is not a replacement for other domains such as air, sea, land, space, and cyberspace. Rather, it is a lens through which the environment can be viewed, which spans across all the other domains. The significance of the human domain to ABI is unparalleled. It provides the context and understanding of the activities and transactions and allows, in some cases, for predictive intelligence, i.e. forecasting human activity. The human domain, according to this paper, is broken down into four data categories. First is the biographical information. That's pretty self-explanatory. The second data type is called activities or what you do. The first being who you are. The third data category is relational or who you know. The final data category is contextual, which is information about the context or the environment in which the entity, or in this case you, the network node, is found. This data is not static, but changes and shifts radically over short time frames. Therefore, a good model of the past is truly insufficient in aiding analysis of today. It goes on to say, for the biographical data uh, category, analysts will collect information about name, address, gender, biometrics, language, Facebook pages, etc., for, act for activities, um, the collected information will include travel, communications, financial transactions, movement of physical assets, etc. The relational information includes family, friends, associates, membership organizations, community involvement, etc. And finally, the fourth data set, uh, the contextual data type, will include demographics, political environment, cultural norms, social interactions, tribal customs, religions, etc. It is important to note that much of the work within the field of the human terrain or human geography analyzes the information contained within the contextual data category. Under analysis in the human domain, it says the human, human domain analytics requires analytical methods which support multi-intelligence, unstructured, and subjective data. What that says to me is that if the data is subjective, the software will draw conclusions as to the meaning of that data before the entire picture is formed. And then it goes on to say that the geospatial location of the entities um, present in the data is off also often unidentified at the outset, which may add complications based on legal jurisdictions. Hmm. Within the human domain analytic, steps include finding the entity, characterizing the entity. The analyst, or the software, works with multiple data types to geo-reference information with known activities and transactions, correlating across those data types geospatially, temporally, and logically. And it also adds to the context and resolution of the entities involved in ABI, or activity-based intelligence. ABI key enablers. 
The rapidly approaching cloud architectures being developed by industry as well as the government lend themselves well to the storage and processing of immense quantities of information. They're using the data you're voluntarily putting up in the cloud as part of their neural net database. Enabling the data in the cloud requires that all data have associated metadata uh, that is tagged, searchable and accessible by analysts who have access to the tools to permit exploitation and analysis. The amount of data presented in any phenomenology-based data set is enormous. However, when adding the four data types of the human domain, the wealth of information is unimaginable and in many cases so vast to be of no use. Well, as explained previously, they are taking care of that with technology develop, being developed by the likes of Lidos Corp and others that are able to develop logarithmics and analytics for dirty data or huge data dumps. This component of the system will be driven by a metadata standard whereby all necessary information about entities, their activities, and their relationships can be captured and which is a key enabler and an absolute essential. It is only through a robust metadata standard that algorithms can be developed to associate information and thereby entities reducing the data to a set that can be exploited and then analyzed. The future act of activity-based intelligence. Major intelligence agencies such as NGA will begin to place more and more emphasis on the ABI and human domain analytical tradecraft to solve mysteries that all know are present. But in the words of Director Clapper, who is a main player in this push, when he served as Under Secretary of Defense for Intelligence, these arrows will form the um, intellectual underpinning for how we conduct intelligence in the future. And I dare say the future is here. And if you look at all these uh, governmental agencies that are involved, you have um, intelligence-led policing, program of the Bureau of Justice, Defense Science Board, Defense Intelligent um, Counterinsurgency, or COINTEL, and of course the Honorable James Clapper, Under Secretary of Defense for Intelligence. And if you have any doubts that API is currently being deployed in geospatial intelligence, just look at this uh, graphics rendering where they use this technology, <coughs> excuse me, and they can identify percentages of Russian-speaking people from less than 10% to over 80%, and they can identify pro-maiden geocoded tweets in the blue and purple, and pro-Russian geocoded tweets, tweets in the um, mauve or la you know, uh, brown colors in here. If you still have any doubt that this technology has not already been rolled out and that the lines between government and military have not been blurred but removed, hear now this uh, SOCOM military RSOF 2022 final paper. As we project beyond Iraq and Afghanistan, we will, we will face a challenging security environment. 
We are not returning to a pre-9-11 era of operations, nor the Cold War era, where competing superpowers created a fairly predictable, if tenuous, world order. New world order. Instead, this new world order will be characterized by an irregular balance of power between both state and non-state actors. Future threats will range from standing conventional and unconventional forces to irregular militias and paramilitaries to terrorist groups, criminal elements, and any number of hybrids. Well, that in and of itself by definition could be anything or anyone or any group. While the rise of non-state and transitional actors will serve to complicate U.S. government actions through undergoverned nations, we cannot afford to discount the actions of state-sponsored actors who operate much like other violent extremist organizations, only with the state's direction and support. Hmm. What do we see happening in the Middle East? Countries where state-sponsored, non-state, and transnational actors operate typically have weak and corrupt central governments, high unemployment, exorbitant poverty levels, limited internal infrastructure, deep ethnic and religious divisions, and a history of humanitarian issues. Well, doesn't that sound like the new America? The momentum of human interaction is reaching unprecedented levels, enabled by generational leaps in personal communication technologies and an associated social media explosion with little to no state control of those technologies or applications. Well, the world government is seeking to put a kibosh on that with the TPP, net neutrality laws, laws requiring regulation of the internet, and so on and so on. And by the way, these controls will be placed on us and not on the geospatial intelligence organizations. These controls will be working for them. And here this final report states that it is imperative that our plans are guided by and nested within those of our national leaders and our higher headquarters. I wonder who they could be referring to, the architects of global government? And it goes on to say the following guidance has defined our role as a force. Using this guidance, we will have developed a strategic framework for our way forward. And I think we know what that way forward is. And here again, this strategy is reiterated in yet another documented report. So come 2020, the global SOF enterprise will become a globally networked force of special operations forces, services, interagency, allies, and partners able to rapidly and persistently address regional contingencies and threats to stability and stability, they're referring to social unrest. SOCOM must not only continue to pursue terrorists wherever they, they may find them, they must rebalance the force and tenaciously embrace indirect operations in the human domain. The totality of the physical, cultural, and social environments that influence human behavior in a population-centric conflict. We must think differently, seek greater understanding of local, regional, and global contexts, and strengthen trust through in interagency and partner cooperation. Can we say winning the hearts and minds of the people? <clears throat> While SOF is designed to contribute to or support ever efforts in every domain of warfare and, near I dare say, global population control, the vast majority of SOF, SOF expertise lies in the human domain 
of competition, conflict, and war. The human domain is about developing understanding of and nurturing influence among critical populaces. That's us. Operating in the human domain is a core competency of SOF, S S O F, and we are uniquely suited for successful operations or campaigns to win population-centric conflicts. The emergence of the human domain demands the armed forces and other U.S. government security agencies analyze what it takes to win wars among the people, including defeating terrorists and other VEOs. The concept of humanity being managed and enslaved by an elite technocratic society is no longer a future vision. The network-centric global AI system for human command and control is here. The geospatial intelligence program has been collecting information on every human being at an accelerated pace for the past decade. Social networking platforms, the cloud, cell phone technology are just some of the wonderful life conveniences that have been turned against us. I have no definitive solutions to escape the net that's about to be dropped. I would recommend, to the point that it's practical on an individual basis, get off the electronic grid. Just as with RFID, you can be switched off. It's simply a matter of removing your node from the geospatial intelligence network. Thank you for watching, and please share this video with everyone.